maybe Dr. Akoff will want to add to it, but I would like to also ask you a question uh, about the values and getting profound knowledge taught. How do you get a conversation started when you're trying to help people change? Well, the easiest conditions under which to convince any organization to change uh, is when it's in a state of crisis, when its stability or survival is threatened. If it's desperate enough, it's willing to change in ways it would never otherwise consider. And therefore, one of the important uh, techniques that are available is to show any organization, no matter how successful it is, that in its current future, there is a crisis impending. And the way that's done is you assume that the organization will continue to do what it's doing now indefinitely into the future. And you assume the, org the, the organization's environment will change, but only in ways that it expects. Now, if you project the future of the organization under those two conditions, you have a non-adaptive organization in a changing environment, and therefore will ultimately, through non-adaptation, destroy itself. What you don't know is how. The projection shows you how and reveals the Achilles heel of the organization. Just to give you a quick example, in 1973, this was done for a very conservative organization, the Fourth District of the Federal Reserve Bank. It was able to show that by 1985, the number of people required by the bank to clear checks would exceed the population of the United States. <laughs> now, that clearly could not happen, so the bank took steps, and it was then responsible, together with Atlanta branch, introducing electronic funds transfer system. So the technique of making an organization understand the crisis which is implicit in its current behavior is a very effective way of getting it to think of change. I think it's dangerous to give the impression that change must start at the top. There have been major organizational transformations that have begun at the middle mm -hmm. or at the bottom. For example, Eastman Kodak, a sixth level manager, Henry Fent, produced a major transformation in the corporation. It caught on this contagion and spread out and eventually uh, affected the appointment of a new CEO. Uh, at Alcoa, Tennessee, it started at the bottom and worked up. So I think it's dangerous to give this responsibility for change entirely to the leaders. It's also a responsibility of the followers. Again, Dr. Deming said, in, out of the crisis, the whole movement, movement could start at the middle, speaking with one voice, and build a critical mass. So it can work from other directions. But I suspect it's easier if it comes from the top, isn't it? I mean, if you've got the top guy involved, wouldn't it be a little bit easier to get if it done? If the top is admired by the middle and the bottom. Right. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, there's a point. What role do uh, organizational values and personal values play in, in, in a transformation of any kind of enterprise? Well, there's a fundamental change that we're in the process of experiencing in the organizational values. Uh, historically, organizations were originally looked at as machines which have been created by their God to do his work, much the way Newton looked at the universe. And when it did, the organization had no purpose of its own, but it had a function which was to serve its God. Now, after World War I, we went through a transformation where we began to think of organizations as organisms, biological things. And that's when the company became the corporation, a corpus or a body. And then it had an objective of its own, which is survival. The parts of the organization, the organs, have no purpose of their own, but they have to serve, in functional terms, the purpose of the whole. Now, what we've been going through is a conversion from looking at organizations as organisms to looking at them as a social system. And that involves a tremendous transformation of values. Because the social system has three kinds of values it must serve. It must serve the values of its parts. They have purposes of their own. It must serve the purposes of the larger system that contains it and the other systems that are contained in that larger system. That's the social responsibility of the organization. And it has its own responsibilities. And those are development. Unfortunately, in our culture, the distinction between development and growth is not very clear. Let me just say a word about that. You can grow without developing, and you can develop without growing. The cemetery is a good example. It grows, but it doesn't develop. On the other hand, Einstein continued to develop long after he stopped growing. 
So we have to focus on development, which is an increase in capacity or capability, rather than an increase in size or number. I think we talk about values of an organization when you have to distinguish between what they preach and what they practice. Absolutely. Uh, universities and colleges, for example, preach that their principal value and function is the education of students, and that's absolutely nonsense. You can't explain a university's behavior if you think it's about education of students. <laughs> what it's about is providing the faculty with the quality of work life they want. <laughs> saying that here at this, at this junior college. The teaching is the price they got to pay, and like any price, you try to minimize it. Uh, a corporation says that its principal value is maximizing shareholder value. That's nonsense. If that were the case, executives wouldn't fly around in private jets and have Philippine mahogany lined offices and the rest of it. The principal function of those executives is to provide themselves with the quality of work life that they like. And profit is simply a means which guarantees their ability to do it. Or you take a hospital. It proclaims that it's there to take care of patients. That's nonsense. It's there to provide the doctor with a place to practice medicine. And we're there to make their practice possible. And, and so on. So if we're going to talk about values, we've got to talk about what the values are in action, not in proclamation. Mm -hmm. Ron? No, I can't top that. <laughs> <laughs>